Hello everybody, in this chapter we will learn about specular reflection. Specular reflection is a property of smooth surfaces. It's a property of reflective surfaces. Specular term also corresponds to the shininess of the reflective surfaces. And reflective surfaces tends to show specular highlights. So by three of these properties, we at least know one thing. It's all about reflection. And law of reflection is a very well understood phenomena. And what does law of reflection say? Law of reflection explains that if this is the normal of the surface, I will also draw the surface. So this is the normal. And this is the ray of incidence. This is the light ray. So light is coming in this direction. And because the surface exhibit a property of reflection, then this ray will be reflected as well. And this is the reflected ray. So what does the law of reflection tells us that the angle of incidence, the angle between the normal and the ray of incidence is equals to the angle of reflectance, which is the angle between normal and the reflected ray. So theta i, angle of incidence, will be equal to theta r, angle of reflectance. So this is theta i and this is theta r. This is the incident ray and this is the reflected ray. So we see here that unlike diffuse reflection where the light is reflected in all the directions, for the smooth surfaces, the light is reflected only in one direction, which means it might not travel into the eye. For the diffuse reflection, it was reflected in all the directions with a cosine fall off. So wherever the eye is, some amount of light will travel to the eye. But for the smooth surfaces, the light is reflected in only one direction. So if I is away from that reflected ray, it will not be able to see it. That means the calculation of specular reflection is eye dependent or viewport dependent calculation of specular reflection which takes us to the point that in the calculation of specular reflection there will be at least three variables one is the angle or the direction of incident light second is the normal and third will not be reflected ray because we will calculate the reflected ray based on the incident ray so the third variable will be the angle and the direction of I or viewpoint. Now, if we take a look at some of the materials that exhibit specular reflection, we see here that the specular highlights of these materials are very different. The specular highlight of this material is more sharper. For this material, it is less sharper. And for this one, it is least sharper. So, Bui Tuang Fong, who is famous by Fong, observed this phenomena. He observed that for very shiny surfaces, the specular highlight was small and the intensity fell off rapidly. While for the less shiny surfaces, the specular highlight was large and fell off slowly. So if we observe this surface, which is more shiny, the specular highlight 
is small and its fall off is rapid while for this one the highlight is larger in comparison to the third one and the fall off is relatively slow and for this one the highlight is largest in comparison to other two materials and the fall off is very slow fong explained that this phenomena can be understood by adding a cone of reflectance on the law of reflection so this is the law of reflection model let's add the cone of reflectance in this model so this is the reflected ray and let's add a cone around it so here is our cone of reflectance and this is the angle of the cone so this is the cone of reflectance and what does this cone tell us the angle phi defines the angle of cone defines one the area of visibility of the specular highlight and the diameter of the base of the cone defines the specular property of the material how it defines the specular property so less diameter is sharp specular highlight that means the substance or the material is more shiny if the diameter is larger then it will give us less sharper highlights which is the substance or the material is less specular and the cone of reflectance also tells us that the specular highlights will be visible if the eye direction is within the area of this cone so if the eye is right above the ray of reflection the reflection will be brightest if it is away from the reflected ray reflection will be lesser and once the view direction is out of this cone of reflectance the specular highlights will not be visible which means the angle between eye vector and reflected ray is defining the intensity of specular reflection which takes us back to the lambertian cosine law where the value of diffuse reflection was based on the dot product of vector normal and vector light which is also the cosine theta of these two normalized vector so Lambertian law was defined by n dot l. For specular reflections, the value depends on r and v, which is defined by vector r, the direction of reflected ray, dot the direction of i or direction of a viewpoint. So all this understanding gave us r dot v. and similarly as we did for the lambertian law that we don't care about any value which is outside the range of 0 and 1 so we will define it as max 0 comma r dot v fong also observed that in the cone of reflectance there is a rapid fall off of a specular highlight and this rapid fall off can be approximated by cos theta to the power s where s is the specular power and in this cone the specular fall off can be represented by this green area so according to fong this rapid fall off can be represented by cos theta to the power s where s is a specular power and cos theta is also a dot product of two normalized vectors previously we came up with a formula which is also cos theta between r and v so considering this rapid fall off the equation becomes max 0 comma r dot v to the power s because the only value of cos theta we care about is between 0 to 1 and then we give specular power to it so this will be the equation for our specular reflection and if we want to calculate it in a shader 
what we will have available to use is the normal, the normal of the surface, which is N. We have the position of light available, which is L. And we also have the position of the camera, which is the position of I or the vector V. What we don't have is R. So we will have to calculate R based on the position vector of light because the angle or the direction of incident ray is the light vector, is the position of light from the point of the surface. So now our goal is to find R based on L. And we will use another property of dot product to find out R from L. Vector L is the direction from this blue point to this green point of the surface. And similarly, vector R is the direction from this green point to the pink point. 